Hello and welcome to Attacking Third, a CBS Sports Soccer Podcast. I'm Sandra Herrera, lead NWSL writer for CBS Sports. Joined today, as always, by my colleague and co-host, Lisa Roman, NWSL analyst and broadcaster. On today's episode, we have a special interview with a special guest, Lynn Williams, a forward for North Carolina Courage, United States Women's National Team as well, where she recently won a bronze medal in the Tokyo game. She's got seven goals and two assists in the regular season with the team. How are you doing today, Lynn Williams? Welcome to the show. Oh, thank you. I'm doing well. How are you? Hyped, honestly. We love <laughs> playoffs. We love playoffs here at Attacking Third. Uh, pe- people don't realize that. Like, it's not just like the players who get up for this. It's like we get up for it too. Like, we're really excited to, to get into to end this and then mix it all up. Uh, congrats on making the NWSL Thank playoffs uh, number one, first and foremost. Uh, you've been with North Carolina Courage since their introduction to the league. Um, mm-hmm. This is the first year that the team has made the playoffs other than a number one seed. Mm-hmm. Um, talk to me a little bit about what the energy is around this team right now as as you all head off in, into the quarterfinals. Yeah, well, I'm sure people um, listening and keeping up with the NWSL know of the the news of uh, Paul Riley and um, what our team has been through um, as well as other teams around the league, but um, ours specifically with, um, you know, just that news breaking and basically kind of being turning the league into turmoil as well as losing our coach people, you know, have being abused for all those years, all et cetera. Um, But um, I think that right now, just to be able to make it into playoffs, getting another week together, um, supporting each other, it's, it's an amazing feeling. Um, Obviously it's not the season that we're used to, but um, knowing that we have gone through all of that and making playoffs, I think it's a little bit sweeter. Um, It means a little bit more. Um, And so yeah, the group was excited. You know, we, we thought after we didn't go to Portland and win, um, we knew we still had a chance with the tie. Um, but seeing everybody's face, um, in, in the airport and watching and, and cheering when we found out that we were going through and cheering when, um, Washington scored their goal, it, it just, it makes me excited to play again, be with this group for one more week and, um, hopefully more weeks to come. You and this team um, really have been through a lot when it when it comes to looking at at the the whole picture of things, whether it's on the pitch and off the pitch, as well. Uh, is that really what it is is about right now? Even though there is like a quarterfinal coming up very soon for you guys, is it really just about sort of being this collective unit and just sort of taking things day by day and being supportive for one another despite whatever it is in front of you? Oh yeah, I mean. You know, we're professional athletes. We're competitors through and through. Like we're, we want to win every single game. Um, don't get me wrong. We want to go to Washington and we want to win and we want to win the playoffs. Um, but I think there's a human side too. And a lot of the stuff this season that we've had to deal with off the field, um, it's a lot. I think it's a lot to ask of any human to, um, you know, go through. And then on top of that, you're not only now physically exhausted, but you're mentally exhausted. And, um, soccer is a game for, of who can stay focused the, for 90 minutes, because that's exactly what you're trying to do um, for 90 minutes is figure out a, when somebody switches off for a second. And so when you're mentally exhausted and then trying to play 90 minutes, it's definitely, um, tougher. So I think that going into these games, of course, like I said, we are so competitive, we want to win, but it is leaning on each other, supporting one another. And, um, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it means more this time, I think, than it has in the past. Lots of ups and downs on the field, off the field. And, and for a player like you specifically, that is on the women's national team, um, despite going to the Olympics and and missing a chunk of the season throughout this summer, um, which congrats on the bronze medal. That's amazing. But, but also having to split time between national team and club team over the last few weeks during these FIFA international windows, still Lynn, you are putting up seven goals during this regular season. I mean, (laughs) despite missing all of this time. So now with with North Carolina, as you head into the playoffs, how do you feel about your attacking unit and, and you specifically as an attacker with this team when you've been in and out uh, floating between these two teams? 
First of all, thank you for saying that. I feel like this isn't a typical year for me or a typical stat. So I was a little bit disappointed in myself, but, um, Lynn, remember you, know, guess, you missed half of I, I, guess, <laughs> I like forget. I think you just, it's in my nature. I'm like, geez, Lynn, don't, get it in the don't be so hard on yourself. What on? <laughs> um, yeah, you know, I, I am excited. I feel like I'm, um, in a good spot right now. Um, coming in and out, you know, it's a whole different world, a whole different beast than just playing, um, with one team. Um, I think that that gets brushed aside how, how hard it is to go from one system to the next system, one philosophy to the the next philosophy, knowing that when you're with the national team, your, your club team isn't just stopping, it's continuing to push through. Um, and when you get back, you have to like get back on board. Um, so yeah, I, it's definitely been a learning curve for me this past year, especially, um, but I'm excited. I'm ready. Um, you know, at the end of the day, I'm going to give it my all and, um, that's all I can ask for myself. So let's hope if you go in the back of the net, <laughs> the, the final, the final week of the regular season was a, a wild ride to put it lightly. There were tons <laughs> of decision day scenarios for a ton of clubs, the courage head into Portland, like you said, walk out with a draw. And then you find yourselves kind of in a position where you had to root for the spirit a little bit, the yeah. same team you're about to face now in the quarterfinal. What, what was that weekend like for you personally, just sort of having to, to sit back, watch, and then wait and see if you're in the playoffs. I, I loved the reaction. You were like, thank you <laughs> spirit siblings. Like that was dope. Uh, walk <laughs> us through that, that process of those emotions. Yeah. So we, we go into Portland. We obviously know what we have to do to uh, guarantee, not guarantee a spot, but give ourselves a better chance because we knew that that Houston Washington game, um, no matter if we won or not, was it was going to come down to that game for us. And so, um, you know, go to Portland, we don't get the win, but we know we had an opportunity, like we still have a chance with a tie. And I think everybody walked away from that game knowing we could have put it away. Um, walking away from the Portland game, knowing we could have put away, but still feeling like optimistic, like, okay, we we're still in it. Um, and then, you know, it was walking, going to, through the airport. It was like stressful. Everybody has it up on their phone. Um, everybody's anxiety is high. My, my palms are literally sweating. My heart is racing. Um, people were like having to sit in different corners because they're like, you're stressing me out. <laughs> um, and then our, our plane starts boarding and we're like, there is 10 minutes left in this game. Like (laughs) we, we need to watch this game. Um, and so we are all like the last people to get on the plane. Sorry for, um, all the passengers waiting. We probably held the plane delayed it a little bit. Um, but you know, when Trinity scored the, we all screamed, I think the airport was staring at us like crazy people were like these crazy people. (laughs) Um, but it was exciting, you know, I haven't been a part of something like that, um, in a while where you're just so excited, um, to get into playoffs. I think that, um, considering all that this team has gone through, it would be very easy for us to be like, you know what, we just want to go home. We want to just have some time with our family, get out of here. And that's not the, the, um, attitude or the vibe of the group. So, um, it's super exciting. I think it's super awesome. And also just, it shows the character of this team, um, in the will to want to win and, and be there for each other. So yeah, it was, it's a crazy time, man, but it was awesome. So you're, you're in, you're in the airport and you're, you're holding the plane from boarding and from taking off because of all of this excitement is, is it celebration mode at that point? Or is it, uh, is there a moment, uh, to celebrate and to, uh, really be like, yes, we're into the playoffs or is it auto automatically like now it's time for the playoffs? Like how does that shift happen for you, especially after boarding an airplane? Yeah. Um, I think it was more excitement first. You know, we had a three hour flight that we had to get on right after that. So, um, it was more like, let's get excited. Now let's sit on this plane for three hours and think about how we, how we have to get it together again. Um, because I think a lot of people thought, Houston was going to at least tie, um, especially when it was getting later on into the game, we were like, crap. (laughs) Um, so I I think there was like a wave of emotions. And then once we land, we had one day off and then we were back to it. Um, so I, we definitely gave ourselves a three hour fight to be excited. And then it was back to, okay, we got to recover. We, we have a week, um, where we have to train and get ready for our next game. When, uh, 
when you're thinking about getting back into into that playoff mentality, mm-hmm. I want to talk a little bit about maybe team chemistry. Yeah. Um, you know, you and Jessica McDonald have been the attacking duo of this team for for some time, and she's put up <laughs> four goals of her own this year. She's doing her own thing, right? How how is the playing chemistry uh, of all between the two of the two of you over time, and, and and what do you perhaps think the two of you contribute to the other's game? Mm. That's a good question. It's hard hitting questions here. Um, yeah. You know, Jess is awesome. We've been playing, like you said, for the past six years together, I think it is. Um, which I think it helps, uh, going into these, these bigger games, you know, Jess is such a playoff player. Um, you see her put up big goals during big times. Um, I'm specifically thinking of her performance in 2018 in Portland. Um, but you know, it, it's nice. Like I, because we've played for so long together, it's almost like I know exactly what she's going to do or where she's going to be or her tendencies. And I think she thinks will say the same thing about me. Um, I also think that, um, you know, I, I, I know that if I mess up or she messes up, we have that connection where I can say, Oh, my bad. Like, this is what I need from you. And, and she's receptive to that and vice versa. Um, and we've just, we've, that's how we've grown together. Um, you know, we're very supportive of each other. Um, I wish just nothing but the best and same for her to me. Um, and I think that what's unique about our partnership or is beautiful about our partnership is we don't care who scores. It's just whatever is going to make the team win. Um, and so I don't, I don't know. I could go on for days about, <laughs> we got six years worth of, worth of stuff, but, um, it's been such an honor to, um, you know, be her teammate for this long and, um, watch her grow and grow alongside of her. And there's parts of her game that I've taken and, um, tried to implement in my game. And, um, I like to think vice versa, but who knows? (laughs) Um, so yeah, I, I think we do have a good partnership and, um, I think that it has paid off in big moments. So, um, knock on wood, but I hope it pays off in, in a couple more. Yeah, a, f- a few more together yeah. with you guys up at, up at the top. Um, now, Lynn, when Sandra started this episode in this interview, she listed off of your listed off all of your accolades, national team forward, North Carolina forward. But you are also a podcaster and a <laughs> podcast host. Sandra, you forgot that one. So and we disrespectful. Have to ask. I'm so <laughs> sorry. We have to ask about it because Sandra and I were friends and we're podcast hosts. You have a podcast with your friend and teammate, mm-hmm. Sam Mewis. Um, you're a podcaster. Welcome to the podcasting club. It's Thank pretty you. fun. Isn't How- it so fun? It's so fun. You just chat with your friends about soccer and life. It's, it's really great. So how has the podcasting world been for you? How's who does the content planning? Who writes the script? We want to know, we want to give, we want to know the background details be- behind snacks. Well, first of all, there's a whole, like, you, you don't even realize how much goes on behind the scenes of podcasting. Um, yeah. You're telling us. Like. <laughs> no, we actually do know. <laughs> well, I know, you know, but I think listeners don't really know. Um, and it, it's so fun. Um, you know, me and Sam, we're super close friends. Um, I'm assuming like you guys, it's, it's, we have a joy talking to our guests, um, so far, they've been a lot of our friends, but at the same time, we've gotten to learn a lot about our friends that we didn't realize, um, which has been also very exciting. Um, but yeah, me and Sam, um, so we work with Just Women Sports, um, and I think they're a great um, organization. You know, they they are putting women's sports more on the map and making it more visible and um, attainable to the like audiences who like sports. And I think that's such an amazing mission. Um, and so they came to us, asked us, we're going to do the podcast for a while. We were like, no, we got the Olympics going on. We don't know if we can focus right now. And then, um, when, um, 2020 happened, me, Sam, her husband and their cute little dog, Finn, um, we all quarantined together and me and Sam just, we've lived together for four years and we would have all these like deep night talks, or they would just be like fun talks late at night, um, over either a dessert she made or dinner that we made, or just something fun. And when it turned 2020, our conversations turned from just fun to, to real life stuff, um, with, you know, George Floyd and Brianna Taylor, um, 
And I think we got to know each other a little, like on a deeper level. And um, I'm getting away from the question, but I promise I'll bring it back around. <laughs> but we we started, you know, getting to know each other on a deeper level. And in that moment, when we then were asked again to do this podcast, we saw an opportunity where two people who come from different backgrounds, who don't look alike, can sit down and have deep conversations, but in a constructive and um, positive way. And I think at that time we were like, I think the world needs to see this. Um, so, but obviously we're soccer players. So we, <laughs> we were like, we're going to bring them in with our soccer and just hopefully um, our friendship and make it feel like people are just sitting in on our conversations, having a, like a nice snack with us and um, having a, a deep conversation, but also a fun conversation. And, you know, we write our scripts, we write everything. We, <laughs> um, I just, you know, um, got on the phone with Sam earlier today and was like, all right, we're going to interview this person. What do we need to interview them about? Um, blah, 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 blah. Uh, some part of the podcast, we go off the rails. I'm sure if you guys have listened and it's just nonsense. Um, and we are so grateful for just women's words to be able to chop it up and make us sound good and give us the clips. So we're, um, I don't know if you guys have somebody who does that, me, but that part, I don't even want to be a part of like, that sounds crazy and tough. <laughs> let me, let me tell you, I have listened and I love, are you having an okay time? We need, we need the merch. I'm saying it right now. I'm putting it out. There. I need I need JWS to. to, to that is so. That's a genius idea. Like, I think that me and Sam have a pretty good balance. Um, because I'll say something crazy, and then she'll be like, "Lynn, that was so dumb." But then she'll do something <laughs> like that and say, "Christy, are you having an okay time?" And I'm like, "Sam, first of all, it's your sister. You're in. Just, just relax." Um, but, it, was, it, was a, it was a great episode. I think everybody should go and listen to it if they haven't yet. Yeah, I've, I have heard that that has been people's favorite episode so far. So maybe we have to bring it back. Talk it, was, more about that. it was really one of the good ones. And, and you have had a number of guests on that one being Christy, Sam's sister, which is pretty fun to have on. But um, so you come up with all the content planning and you yeah. do all of that. But do you, is it hard to have conversations with Sam as a friend and be like, we're going to talk about this on the podcast. We're going to have this conversation again. Does that happen? Um, I, well, I think there's like, because we know each other and we have talked off, like there are some topics that we're like, no, do not talk about that. Don't <laughs> ask. Um, and then there are moments where I'm like, I already know the answer to this, but I'm <laughs> going to just say it again. Um, as if I'm, um, saying it for the first time, but then there are like stories. Um, I don't know if you, listen to this one. But when I put my socks in the microwave, I was like, I have a story to tell you, but I need your like genuine reaction. So I cannot tell you until the podcast. <laughs> um, so there's times like that where I'm like, okay, I can't tell you just yet. I love that. I love that. That background to that is that it was authentic that you were yes. like, I got to get the authentic reaction. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, Cause we we've done that before. So in season one, there was a couple of times when we were telling stories and then we were like, crap, like, I have to resell this story on the podcast and I already got your reaction. So I think now that we are mature podcasters this <laughs> season two, um, we have learned that like when it's a good story, we got to, you got to relax and just wait a second. I yeah, love vet that. Veteran podcasters, you're, you're learning the ropes and how to do it, but welcome to the podcast club. It's so fun to have us all here together. <laughs> Thank you. I love veteran. it. Le learning and, and growing and, and evolving. Uh, I'm, I'm eager to hear some, some more episodes. I, I'm going to ask like two, let's do like a quick rapid fire. It'll be like two okay. rapid fire questions and then we'll, and then we'll wrap it up. If you can have, you said that this was a podcast where it's friends with friends and also talking with other friends. So mm -hmm aim for the stars go big go home if you can have like a dream guest on snacks who would it be oh gosh. this is a hard question oh my god lynn it's rapid fire i know <laughs> this isn't rapid at all i'm i there's so many people out there um i think michelle obama would be amazing i think oh yeah that would be probably like my number one um Cause I also think she has a lot to say, but I feel as though she could, she could laugh with us. I'm feeling as I'm getting those vibes from Michelle. Um, so let's go That's with that. Really I don't know how good her soccer abilities are, but we can teach her. 
Yeah, that would be half the fun uh, of the show. And here's a very, very simple one. Uh, if you can only have one snack oh, forever, it what is it going to be? You're killing me with this. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I just said this on another podcast, but I said chips. But that's because they also include chocolate chips. potato chips. <laughs> wow, that's a really good answer. I I'll take no, I don't. I'm gonna call this no. You can't have. Oh, you want to at least at least. You want a potato chip and a chocolate chip are very different things. I'll, Lisa, Lisa. Chips. I'll take a chip. Okay, Lynn. You thought I was the hard hitting questions. It's Lisa. She wants the one. <laughs> she wants the Lisa. One. Don't be don't be a snack hater and let me have all my snacks. <laughs> Chips, plural, <laughs> all encompassing chips. All I love the chips. It. Fine, Lynn, I'll give it to you. You can have all your chips. <laughs> right you. on. I would I would definitely go with Flaming Hots or, or Takis. I'll put it, I'll put it out there. I'll good. put myself on blast. Uh, I, I want to thank everybody uh for listening. Uh it was a fun episode. We appreciate you, Lynn, for joining us. Thank you for joining us. Good luck in the playoffs. Yeah. We have to remind everyone that we're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and anywhere else you listen to your podcast shows. Uh, we're also available as videos, so you can subscribe to us. Uh, on youtube visit youtube.com slash attacking third and uh, we will be back friday uh, with a full nwsl quarter final playoff so for sandra herrera lisa roman and lynn williams this was attacking third